I feel like a rock star. <laughs> Folks, we thank you so much for listening to us, especially those of you sitting out there on the peripheral. I just want to share something with you right now in relation to what my friend was talking about. That is Jesus Christ. Maybe some of you hear that name and it's kind of a bit distasteful to you or maybe you don't care about it at all. You're just kind of a bit indifferent about it. Well, there's a reason for that. Imagine right now I were to walk up to you with a briefcase in my hand packed full of cash. Let's say a million dollars. And I came up to you and I said, hey, listen, we're doing a scientific experiment and we're collecting human eyeballs. We'll take your right one, your left one, you have one hidden somewhere we don't know about. We'll take that one too. We'll replace it with a glass eye so you won't look any different. You won't feel any pain. You'll still have vision out of your other eye. Within 15 minutes, you'll have a million dollars, cold cash, tax-free. I wonder if you would do it. Maybe I'd get a few eyeballs, but you know what? If I upped it to about 50 million or 100 million or 200 million, I guarantee you I'd get a bag full. But you know what? I have yet to meet one person in their right mind who would sell both their eyes for even $100 trillion for all the money in the world. And if you think about it, what are your eyes? These two little ping pong balls, right? Compared to the scope of your body, they're pretty much insignificant. But your eyes are the windows to your soul. There's something looking out of these windows. So if these little windows are worth more to you than all the money in the world, how much more valuable should be the soul that's looking out of them? And that's what we want to urge you with tonight is to recognize that a day is coming when you're going to cease to be animated with life. You're going to breathe your last breath. You're going to die and stand before a holy God who knows all that there is to know about you. And I guarantee you this, that on the day of judgment, when you stand before that holy God, Whitney Houston isn't going to be there singing, I believe the children are the future. As you run the slow motion, the chariots of fire blaring in the background and the wind rushing through your hair and the, eye, your, the light gleaming in your eyes, you're going to stand in absolute pin drop dead silence before a holy God. And the question is, is are you good enough to enter his kingdom? Measure yourself by his standard. Look into the mirror of his law, and that'll tell you. Think back in your mind, go down memory lane, consider all those times where instead of speaking words of truth, you twisted it and lied for your own convenience. Those times when instead of being filled with love towards your fellow creature, your heart was filled with hatred, which God equates with murder. Instead of being pure of mind, you've given yourself over to lust and sexual immorality, which the Bible equates to adultery. If you've used God's name in vain, by God's standard, you're a blasphemer. Friends, when you stand before God on the day of judgment, there will be a severe reckoning because liars and adulterers and murderers and blasphemers will have their part in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone, the Bible says, forever and ever. So tonight we want to urge you to recognize your guilt, to recognize you violated the law of the holy God, that you deserve hell for all eternity, but then recognize the good news that 2,000 years ago God sent his son to hang upon that cross for your sins, to rise again, and if you turn and repent and place your faith in him, he'll wash your sins away and give you everlasting life. But let me leave you with this, friends. The thing that makes sin utterly sinful is the fact that we use the very things that should cause us to be in awe of God to spurn His name and sin against Him. Instead of using our eyes that He gave us in a way that honors Him to be in awe, that we can see images, that our brain can record them and we can remember them, we use them to look at filth. Instead of using our hands, which are so amazingly made with such dexterity, and technical ability, instead of using them for righteousness, we use them to sin against the God who gave us life. Instead of, instead of using our lips and our tongues and our vocal cords in ways that will glorify God and to think, wow, what is speech, the ability to communicate, we use them to blaspheme His name. So recognize today the sinfulness of sin and acknowledge the love and the mercy and the grace of God demonstrated on the cross when the Holy Son of God died and rose again. Turn to Him and set your faith in Him and he'll set you free. Amen. Amen.